That's fire. Yeah, your favorite tale, little bacon bear. And when they snuck over and said, do you want to talk to Ghazi? I said, well, hell yeah, because there's only a couple people that do things right. And I don't know if I've ever got to see you in D.C., but can you talk to the people in D.C. right quick? Give them a quick little rundown of who you are, what you do. Uh, my name is Ghazi. I run a pretty formidable record label called Empire, and I'm just out here trying to create livelihood for the people I love. That was such a humble response. That was the humble response because I think when you say Empire, it has cranked out some fantastic names. It has given us great talents, but it has also stayed consistent. And I think that a lot of talents, when we talk about rappers, everybody says, oh, stay consistent. But that's like the really hard thing to do. Incredibly hard. How long, is the, how long have you been in the game at this point? Uh, I've been making music consistently and been in and around music for about 30 years. 30 and years. And then uh, Empire been been doing this thing since 2010. So this will be the 13th year. What makes a special talent? How do you know when you see a star? Something in your gut. Really, honestly. It's really? not something you can really explain. It's kind of like... It's like when you meet a girl and she gave you a little butterfly in your stomach, right? It's like you, you meet an artist and you're like, there's something special about this person. Okay. Um, there's something about, there's a reason that I want to engage. I want to hear the music, the smile, the charisma, the, the aura. It's aura. The aura? That's the word I was looking do for. I have a, do I have an aura? Do I have you have aura? an aura. Your name is Lil Bacon Bear. One of my favorite places to eat in San Francisco is called Sweet Maple, and they make palm-ass bacon. I do love a good maple bacon. We are yeah. off to a great start. Yeah. And I love the go aura piece, but I think that some people are missing the star power but have the music, and those two things don't meet in the middle. When you meet talents like that that maybe are introverted or they're a little yeah. bit in their shell and they're still kind of like standing in front of themselves, how do you bring that out of them? You don't necessarily have to bring that out of them. Yeah. Sometimes you just let people be who they are, and that's fine, and I'm okay with that. And um, we've created a lot of very successful artists that have generated a lot of revenue and have done very well for themselves without being quote-unquote mainstream superstars. But they're subculture stars, and they have a great following. Um, they have great fans. The engagement is there, and they don't have to do all the extra stuff, and that's okay, too. I'm okay with that. I love that you said subculture because when we talk about subculture, I get like uh, dub with radio. We get a little bit of resistance about what goes on on the underground and whether we're still relevant, whether we're still yeah. active, whether we still matter and we still care, but subculture is the thing that drives the industry, right? Yeah, and we're very much a subculture label. When you look at artists like Babyface Ray, sure. you look at artists like Mo3, RIP Mo3, you look at artists like Money Man, uh, Larry June from San Francisco. Sure. And Larry June came to Washington, D.C. and sold out a 3,000 cap I room. I came there. He sold out 3,000 cap by himself. Yeah. No records at radio. No radio. Nothing on television. All subculture. And sells out all his merch the minute it drops. Within wanna, 10 minutes, it's sold out. Thank you for the merch piece. I want to go there next. The subculture piece, I think that there a lot of artists that tell them to take their music where it's appreciated. And if radio isn't the thing that's embracing them, cool, you can still find success. Sure. But the merch piece seems to be a thing that I hear tossed around. What's the importance in that? Merch Give is, us a free game. I mean, it's really another segment of culture because what you got to understand is we spend a lot of money on outdoor marketing like billboards, you know, buses, benches, things of that nature. But yeah. if you can get your fan base to buy your merch, they're yeah. basically walking billboards. They're walking advertisements. They're out in the field advertising for you all day long. Sure. And these are super fans. If somebody's willing to buy a T-shirt, a hat, a beanie, a hoodie. That's a super fan. That's a gem right there. I always say that because the people that are willing to put their dollar on the line are the people that are willing to show up at your venue and stand there all night and rock out with you. And those are the people that will buy your album three, four, yeah, five, Yeah, they're also times. evangelizing your brand without even trying. So See? it's passive engagement. Without even which is trying. Beautiful, which is beautiful. I think a lot of people obviously lean into the idea that they want to be the star, they want to be the rapper, they want to be the person with the chain, but there are also people that still want to sit at the desk and do the hard work and get these things done. What about you? What advice would you offer to somebody who wants to be in the executive? executive space or be the boss man the leader dot your eyes cross your t's study a lot understand the industry's trends and where the industry is headed yeah uh, you know build your build your resume your network people say your network is your net worth i don't know if i necessarily agree with that but really? i agree with it to a point yeah um but i think the most important thing is to build yourself um to build yourself up in terms of your fundamental understanding of how things are working. I never worked in the traditional music space. Yeah. I came from left field. And sometimes naivety was my greatest gift. 
because I didn't have a predisposed Maybe. notion so about how things should be done. So you didn't have to reshape. You didn't have any bad habits to unlearn and relearn. You just had a fresh slate. I had a fresh slate. I love Clean that. Slate. I wish more people came in with a fresh slate, but I think um, it's really special that there are still people that are willing to get boots on the ground about their work, and I cheers mm -hmm. to you on that. Thank you. Where? What is one? Now, let's say one opportunity that walked away from you that you wish you would have doubled back and said yes on. You got any of those? Damn it, that's, that's, that's hard. I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay. okay. I don't want to expose. I don't want to expose. Don't cut anybody too deep. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to expose myself for my mistakes. Okay. We'll just well, make it look all clean. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Well, when it does happen, coming over that adversity can come, sometimes be hard getting back on the ball. When you turn away an opportunity and it gets away from you, how do you regroup to get better? Um, I'm a pretty easy person. Things don't really weigh on me too much. Sure. Um, I'm quick to brush something off and move on to the next thing. I'll extract whatever that experience is. Yeah. Um, absorb it, table it in my back of my brain somewhere and learn from it. But I'm quick to move on from it and just move on to the next thing. Have you ever written a book? No. What's up with your book? I think you have some thoughts that maybe, are going on yeah, here. Yeah, maybe someday. I just don't agonize over things. I think agony yeah. is a wasted emotion. I wish I was like that. I'm a person that mulls over things you 15, can. 16 times. You can. Agonizing, agony will paralyze you, and it'll, you know, it'll create fear of success. It'll create fear of failure. Um, sometimes, it, when people agonize over things, it pushes sure. a pause button on something that doesn't need a pause button. So, um, I don't know. I just brush things Damn. off. Like I have. I like, love that. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be practicing no agonizing today. Yeah, Gazi don't. said no. Because. Like, let's say you agonizing over a flight you might miss because you're sure. in the Uber, right? But you can't And the Uber's racing. That. You can't control that. Yeah. All you're doing is putting yourself in a bad space yeah. energy-wise. So I just tell myself, look, the moment this Uber pulls up to the airport, I'll run 100 miles an hour. But at this particular moment in time, I can't do anything. You do so what I'm you can. I'm not going to stress. Yeah. I, I like to shorten it to say control the controllables. You do what Absolutely, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I have a lot of DMV talent. Because I do a segment on my show that yeah. is devoted to giving free interviews. If I come to DMV, you could take me to a go-go club. I've never been to a go-go club. Okay, so club. we may not be able to take you to the club, the go-go spot, but I can take you to hear some go-go okay, definitely. That's cool. And I can build you on the culture of it. Right. But I have talent that always, I have a segment on my show. I'm working towards 100 DMV artist interviews for the free 99. And I'm well on my way. I think I'm at 80. But everybody asks me about getting signed and what it takes to get signed. And when they sit in front of the right person to get signed, what sure. are the things they need to say? Give them a little piece of advice or tell them where not to fuck it up. Uh, keep doing these interviews with Lil Bacon Bear because Woo! I'm about to use her as an A&R funnel and I'm going to tell her to DM me the links of the people that's popping in the DMV and we're going to make this pop. Can I tell you a secret I've never told anybody on camera yet? I think A&R might be my next leap and bound because I think that there's so much untapped culture in the DMV and we're just missing the infrastructure but we got the talent there. You, you said a key word, infrastructure. I mean, uh, all jokes aside, infrastructure is probably the most important component in the success of Empire. I'm an infrastructure person. So before I, I tried to go far and wide, I made sure that my infrastructure was tight. Okay. Well, we're still building ours. We're like babies. I like to say the DC's babies because we got our Wale's yeah. and we have our shy glizzies, but we're still kind of making our way in this. But what advice would you pass to our city just as far as our artists are concerned about just continuing to treasure on because we've had some losses this year that have been really big? Um, I listened to an interview that Birdman did about five years ago, and he said, too many artists, not enough CEOs. So Woo! Say that again. we need to raise a generation of people that are equipped to nurture these artists and so what I would say that I see on a regular basis in all these regions is there's not enough executive prowess yeah. and people willing to do the stuff that's maybe not as glamorous. Not everybody's ready. Everyone wants to be the star. Yeah. Everybody wants to wear the chain. Yep. So, but everybody gets a nice watch. It's nice. He, not he hit the watch. He hit it from me. He hit it from me immediately. Let's tuck that. <laughs> <laughs> where can we check in with you? Where can we say hello? Where can we send you well wishes? Are you on social I'm on, media? Yeah, I'm on social media on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, Gazi, G-H-A-Z-I. With the rest of the year for Empire, is there anything exciting that's going to shake yeah. the room and shake this little ass table? Yeah, we got uh, Fireboy DMLs yeah. doing the BT Awards tomorrow. For sure. First African artist to ever do the BT Awards. Really? Uh, I did not know that. I'll have to tap in with him on that because that Ed Sheeran joint, we've been running it in yeah. the ground. Money Man album just dropped today. He's going to be coming in the room shortly. Yes, sir. We'll be moving around with him. We got a new uh, Young Blue album coming this summer. Facts got him yesterday. A slew of African artists, a hitmaker album. 
and I just said a, there's going to be a ridiculous amount of albums coming out. Can I just give you, you? I love that you just talked about Africa. Okay. Are you onto the Amor Piano wave? Yeah, of course. Okay, so what, what's the Empire Amor Piano artist? Because there's got to be one. I don't want to reveal that yet, but we just hired three employees in South Africa in okay, Johannesburg. So I'm on it. I see vision. So the wave is coming. The wave is coming. I love it. You yeah. have great vision, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I'm excited to I'm see only, you. I'm only as great as the people I decide to do business with. They make me great. I appreciate them. I got love for everybody. I want to drop the mic, but I won't. But I won't drop the mic. Thank you so much, Gazi. Thank you, little bacon bear.